What up techies? Welcome back. Most people know Venus as the planet that is closest to Earth. What most people don't know, however, is that Venus has funky pictures that have been taken of it. It's full of weird lines and blotches that make it look like something out of a horror movie. But what does it all mean? No one knows for sure. But scientists are constantly working on theories about what could be causing those strange markings. So far, they've come up with some pretty exciting ideas. Stay tuned to find out more. Over 40 years ago on the surface of Venus, the Soviet Union's Venera 14 space lander made a successful landing. One of humanity's first glimpses into another world was made possible by this mission, which lasted only 57 minutes before shutting down due to extreme conditions and emitting a signal that would fade into the history books. Even after more than four decades since NASA's Mariner program took these groundbreaking photographs, this particular photo still stands out as one of some quite remarkable pieces obtained by exploring faraway planets like never before seen anywhere else. Throughout the program, 13 rovers could reach Venus and relay data about our neighbor. Additionally, eight rovers could land successfully on the planet's surface, and four of these rovers could take stunning images. It is so difficult to land on Venus because the surface of the planet is always shrouded in a thick toxic cloud cover. Behind that cloud cover, the surface of the planet has temperatures and pressures that are extremely high. Venus is the planet with the highest average temperature in the solar system, although Mercury is physically closest to the Sun. In this location, the temperature can reach approximately 475 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to approximately 900 degrees Fahrenheit. To put that into some form of perspective for you, that is more than seven times higher than the average air temperature on Earth. Temperatures are high enough to melt steel. However, that only accounts for the temperature. At the surface of Venus, all of that dense cloud creates an atmospheric pressure that is more than 90 times that of Earth's, making it nearly impossible to breathe. At this location, the atmosphere would have a pressure comparable to that found more than 914 meters or 3,000 feet below the ocean's surface. In addition to the intense heat, this climate is likely to prove fatal to most spacecraft designed to investigate Venus's terrible terrain. However, the Venera landers were built to resist these harsh conditions for just long enough to collect data and deliver us the first ever look at the surface of Venus. This was a significant achievement for the scientific community. But how precisely does one capture a photograph in such a horrifying setting? Based on the information gathered in the past, it was obvious that the camera would be rendered useless if it were to be placed outside of the protective shell because of the extreme pressure and temperature. Because of this, the developers decided to install a telephotometer inside of the lander. Light from the surface was allowed to enter the protected interior space of the camera by way of a specialized porthole. The light was then directed to the periscope by the camera. The Venera 9 spacecraft, which made its first voyage on June 8, 1975, was the first mission to make an attempt to photograph the surface of Venus utilizing this technology, although the probe was able to land successfully. Sadly, only one of the lens caps on the two cameras came off. What was supposed to be a panoramic photo of the lander that encompassed all 360 degrees ended up being only 180 degrees. On the other hand, we finally got our first glimpse of this charred countryside. The ancient Venera imaging equipment is responsible for the distortion which can be seen as a white object at the bottom of the picture that is a lander component. Most of the landscape is dominated by jagged and partially eroded rocks, many of which are partially concealed by the surrounding soil. Additionally, the mysterious horizon may be seen in the picture's upper left and right corners. On October 25, 1975, Venera 10 made it to the ocean's surface after following in Venera 9's footsteps. Again, regrettably, only one of the lens caps detached properly which resulted in the return of a panoramic photo spanning 180 degrees before the camera went silent after approximately 65 minutes. According to the experts, the illumination in the snapshot was comparable to the brightness that would have been present on Earth during a cloudy summer day. The items at the bottom are pieces of the spaceship, and the ground appears to be covered in flat slabs of rock, very similar to the terrain that may be found in volcanic regions here on Earth. Both Venera 11 and Venera 12 successfully landed on Venus in December 1978 and proceeded to collect even more data for more than an hour, while also attempting to capture the very first photographs ever taken in color. Unfortunately, the lens cap problem manifested itself once more in both instances. During these two missions, neither of the lens caps on the cameras could detach, which meant that neither of the landers could capture any images. However, they were successful in returning valuable data. After this disheartening lens cap malfunction, engineers made various improvements to the design of Venera 13 and Venera 14. As things stand, Venera 13 and Venera 14 are the only probes that have ever transmitted color photographs of the cloudy landscape of Venus. On March 1, 1982, 
The Venera 13 spacecraft arrived on Venus. The lens caps could be securely released as soon as the lander was safely on the surface. The cameras immediately began snapping the panoramic photographs of the surrounding area. The probe could record in color what looks to be an alien terrain predominated by flat, dark, stratified rocks, with fine grain-like soil material filling in the gaps between them. It persisted for 127 minutes before going silent, which was just enough time to accomplish this. In one of the photographs, the lens cap can be seen sitting in front of the lander, while in another, some distant rolling ridges are seen in the corner. On March 5, 1982, just four days later, Venera was likewise successfully ejected, letting us observe even more of this horrific terrain. However, the Earth appears to be far more broken at this time, with very little of the grain-like soil debris seen in image 13. You can again make out the lens cap thrown away, as well as the foggy horizon in the distance. These breathtaking photographs gave us a glimmer of insight into a world hidden beneath a blanket of dense clouds so that the planet's surface remained a mystery until the first lander arrived. They showed us what appeared to be a golden sky over a shattered and forlorn terrain that was simultaneously foreign and recognizable. They discovered that the conditions on Venus are so severe that nothing from Earth could live there. However, it's possible that this world used to be more like Earth before it underwent a catastrophic climatic change. Will there be future missions? It has been decades since we last had a clear view of what lies beneath the clouds of our burnt neighbor, but that could soon change. Because this searingly hot picture of hell is set to get a few more guests very shortly. The Da Vinci mission, which will examine the origin, evolution, and contemporary status of Venus from near the top of the clouds down to the ground is one of the most fascinating projects that NASA is working on right now. The launch of the mission is scheduled to take place sometime in 2029, which means that we will have to wait a little while longer. But the Da Vinci spacecraft will drop a fall probe into Venus during one of its flybys. The probe will be equipped with a camera, providing us with views of Venus that have never been seen before. As soon as it breaks through the dense cloud cover, the probe will immediately begin its hour-long descent gathering hundreds of measurements and acquiring close-up photos of the surface. However, the probe doesn't need to survive the landing. If it does, it will be able to deliver up to 17 minutes of additional important scientific data. Because the Da Vinci Plus Descent probe does not have a panoramic camera, the ancient photographs taken by the Venera landers may continue to be the greatest up-close images of our sinister neighbor for many years. This is an impressive demonstration of the innovative engineering that developed these pioneering probes all those years ago. 40 years after the Venera 14 probe sent back its groundbreaking photo of Venus, we're still learning from the data it captured. The Venera probes were some of the first space missions to study another planet in depth, and their legacy continues today. Each new mission to Venus helps us learn more about our neighbor, its climate, and how best to explore it. So far, we've sent over a dozen probes to Venus, and each one has contributed something unique to our understanding of this inhospitable world. What will be next for Venus exploration? Comment below and let us know your thoughts.